meeting is being recorded. Hello, my name is Evan. I'm here at Sarah Laser, and I'm going to be doing a demonstration of the LightWeld uh, handheld fiber laser welding system for you today. Um, I've got your parts all laid out here. I've uh, done a little bit of testing just to verify some settings and uh, make sure I, uh, I know how this part is going to go together and everything. Um, so yeah, I'll get, I'll get to welding in a minute. There's a few things I'm going to go over first. Um, I'm going to go over the safety aspects of uh, welding with this fiber laser. I'm going to go over how the machine operates and the, the hardware portions of it. Um, and then I'll uh, a answer any questions if you have any, and then I'll get right into welding. Uh, before I start, do you have any questions right off the bat? And then, no, I think we're no, nothing yet. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So yeah, for as far as the safety goes, uh, you'll see that I'm wearing these these glasses here. Uh, this is going to be the most critical safety feature that we're going to need to uh, use when we're welding with this. Um, as you can tell, they're very clear. It almost looks like they don't have any uh, any tint or filter on them, but, but they actually have a really, really high level of filtration for this type of light. Um, unlike your traditional arc welding process, this is going to produce an infrared wavelength of light, not a UV wavelength of light. So, uh, so as far as like sunburns and stuff like that goes, it's it's not. Uh, we don't really have a risk of that happening. Um, and like when you get your eyes burned from like TIG welding, you know, it feels like there's sand in your eyes kind of, um, and it goes away, but th this is a little different. The infrared light can be focused by our eye, uh, magnified, and it can do some lasting damage to our retinas and our eye. Um, so it's really important that we wear these glasses. They, they have a special filtration uh, that only allows one photon of light for every 10 million photons of light to pass through. So it's a really, really high level of filtration. And it's actually more than what's necessary for this, but it's, uh, you know, th this is what we'll be wearing uh, all the time when using this process. Um, they also double as safety glasses. So I just wear them around the shop. They're very easy to see through. Um, and they are, uh, they're also available in prescription. So if you need prescription glasses, you don't have to uh, double up. You can uh, get these made in your prescription. <clears throat> uh, in addition to this, uh, it's always recommended to wear long sleeve clothing when welding, although you'll find that there's no spatter with this uh, process um, and there's no sunburn risk since there's not a UV light being produced. Um, but really, it's just because we're, we're working with hot materials. Uh, so it's always it's always good to cover your skin with uh, non-flammable clothing. And then I'm also going to be wearing this helmet. Uh, you can probably tell that it's a real standard welding helmet here um, underneath. We're actually just going to put it on cut mode uh, because there is no arc. And there's no UV light produced by an arc, so um, it's not very bright. It's, it's much dimmer than what we get with a TIG weld. Uh, in fact, I like to have a nice bright light source uh, to, to help me see what I'm doing a little bit better. Um, so yeah, I have it on cut mode with a shade of five. Um, okay, so here's the difference uh, between from the normal welding helmet. You'll see we have this aluminum shield here with another layer of uh, protective glass. So this glass is similar to the glasses. Um, it serves to prevent that light from just getting in our facial area. Um, as I mentioned, the glasses are protecting our eyes, but it's good to just keep that light away from our face. Uh, so this is an added layer of protection. Um, and then the, the aluminum shield uh, serves to deflect any reflected light that may occur. Um, it's only likely to occur if you're using the the welder improperly. Um, for instance, you're not you're not supposed to be welding in a direction where it would aim towards yourself or towards another person. Um, but in that case, this aluminum shield would deflect any light uh, because it wouldn't be focused at that point. So it's not uh, intense enough to do any damage to this aluminum. <clears throat> so yeah, I'll be wearing the glasses and the helmet uh, when I'm using this. Other people that are in this space, say if somebody was over here, you know, prepping a part for welding or deburring or something, all they need is the, the glasses. But when you're up close and welding, you'll need the glasses and the helmet. Uh, okay, so that brings me to the next point, which is the space that we're welding in. Um, so you might be used to seeing, um, you know, tinted curtains uh, in a weld shop. And those serve to, to block off some UV light uh, for those who are walking by. 
uh, to prevent arc flash and sunburns and stuff like that. Um, but this is an infrared wavelength of light and those curtains are not gonna be able to stop that, this light. Uh, it'll just go right through. So uh, what we need is some type of physical barrier to create like a laser safe environment. Um, now this can vary from shop to shop depending on how many people you have in your shop or what your shop layout looks like. Uh, but really what you want to try to do is have some type of uh, blocked off area uh, to be using the laser in. Um, so you'll see that I'm in this in this booth here. Uh, this is constructed out of aluminum. Uh, it doesn't have to be aluminum. It can be any like physical barrier for the light. Uh, but really the point here is that if we, if we were to have a flashlight and, you know, turn turn around in any direction where there's people, you'd want uh, no light to escape between cracks in the walls. So these panels have overlaps. Um, it doesn't have to have a ceiling unless you have a second floor uh, look, that can look right in. Uh, it doesn't have to go all the way to the floor. Uh, there's some guidelines that uh, Glenn, who's my boss, he's on this call also, that he can provide you with if you were to try to construct your own. Um, but we also sell a modular version of this room uh, that you can, you know, you can buy four foot wide panels and construct into the size that you might need. <clears throat> So, uh, but yes, as far as actually being able to use the welder in this space, uh, we do need some type of door switch. So this is a redundant mag read switch. There's two circuits in here. Um, so I can be welding and anybody in here that's wearing eye protection can be in here with the door closed welding. Uh, and then my coworkers outside uh, don't have to be wearing the glasses. And if they need to tell me something, say there's an emergency, they could feel free to open the door. And the second that that switch uh, breaks contact, it'll uh, stop the laser from firing. So, uh, so yeah, this is something that's required to fire the laser. Um, we have some laser safe acrylic windows here so that people can monitor what's going on in here. Uh, but yeah, I'll uh, have my boss send you some more information about the, the cells also. <clears throat> Any problems getting that set up? For, yeah. Okay, so over here you'll see the actual. Oops, hold on, I'm getting my computer out. Okay, uh, over over here you'll see the uh, the welders. I have uh, two different models here. Uh, this is the XR model, which is the the top of the line system. Um, XR stands for extended range, <clears throat> and that allow, that gives you a little bit more, uh, a little bit better performance with uh, thinner materials, such as like especially thin aluminum. Uh, you know, you can go down into the 30,000 aluminum range. Uh, we've actually done a little bit thinner, but, uh, you know, in a practical sense, it'll get you down in like the 30,000th range and up to a quarter of an inch of penetration. Uh, so this is just like a wider uh, range of applications you can do. But uh, for most applications, you're going to be fine with the base model or the XC model. Uh, I'm going to be using the XC for this application today. Uh, just because it's uh, it works great for this thickness of material. Um, the XR would do everything this one can do, uh, but again, if you don't need the extra, extra thin side of things or you don't need a quarter of an inch of penetration, you can definitely get away without spending the extra money on this one uh, with, with the XC. Um, so, okay, so there's the XC and then there's the base model, uh, like Weld 1500. As far as the welding goes, they're identical. Uh, they will be exact same. <clears throat> the only difference being that the XC has a cleaning function, which can uh, remove discoloration from the material after welding. Uh, can also clean your material before welding. Uh, it, it has the ability to perform passivation on stainless steel, so a lot of people like it for stuff like what you're doing here. Uh, if, if you if you need to, you know, passivate the material. I'm not sure if this one does, but. Uh, you know, for some food and medical and um, lab grade stuff, they need to, you know, clean the welds afterwards. Um, so if you're interested in the cleaning feature, the XC is the one to go with. If you don't care about that, um, you know, you could even go with the, the base model. But, um, but yeah, so this one uh, is what I'm going to be using today. <clears throat> as far as the, uh, the system here, it's an air-cooled fiber laser with a 1,500-watt rated output power. So um, yeah, at, at our at our highest energy output, we're gonna be 1500 watts and our minimum is gonna be 150 watts. 
it's a multi-mode laser. Um, that's real, really the difference between these. This is multi-mode, this is a single mode laser. Um, and yeah, it's air cooled. So there's two cooling fans and some heat sinks inside that'll keep it running at, uh, up to a hundred percent duty cycle. Um, I think it's, uh, it's 90% duty cycle at 90 degrees ambient temperature. Uh, so it's really good, really good performance. It runs on single phase, 220 volt power, and it won't draw any more than 24 amps. And uh, the realistic range that you're going to be using this one in is going to be, uh, you know, 40 thousandths up to about 3 sixteenths material. Um, actually, I shouldn't say material. That's how much penetration you can get. So you can uh, have control down into the 40 thousandths range, and uh, you can get up to 3 sixteenths penetration with it. So, but you're not limited to 3 sixteenths material. You can weld thicker stuff, just not going to get full penetration with it. <clears throat> Okay, so when we go about using this, uh, what we're gonna do is use this um, <clears throat> settings chart. It comes with all the machines and you're gonna use this to get your, your settings pretty close. <clears throat> These settings are really well thought out and they work extremely well. Um, I've been using this for almost two years and I still just go by this chart and then just make minor adjustments from there. So for these parts, I'm gonna be using a filler wire. Uh, because there's some gaps here and there, and I, I like I just like using the filler wire when I have the opportunity to. So I'm going to choose stainless steel. It's going to tell me I need nitrogen gas, which is what I have. Um, and then there's four different types of weld: continuous wave, modulation, which is like a pulsed fusion weld, tack for tack and spot welding, and then W for wire. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to A6 which is a wire welding mode with about one millimeter of penetration. Uh, it appears that most of this material is, uh, you know, 060 to maybe like 074. Um, so I think that uh, <clears throat> this will give us plenty of penetration. Um, if we need a little bit more power, we can jump up to the next uh, setting here. Uh, but from the testing I did on one of the parts, I, I found that the A6 setting seemed to work just fine. So I'm going to just go with that one. Um, and it, once you see the results, if you if you say, okay, I need a little bit more uh, penetration on that, then I can turn the turn the power up too. But yeah, so A6 is the setting. You see, I have that dialed in right here on the machine. And uh, I, I changed the setting by uh, holding down these buttons in order to change the first character, A, C, E, F. Uh, so I'll go back to A. And then the second character I'll change by just momentarily pressing these buttons. So you see A6 gives us a power of 600 watts. If I need more penetration, I'll just turn it up or turn it down. And then I can memorize uh, the power too. So let's say I find that 550 watts is actually better. Uh, I can then hold down these two buttons and override the preset with that power. So now when I go back to that setting, it'll uh, it'll save that power. And I'm, I'm going to revert it back to its factory just so I don't forget later. So I'll hold it for six seconds and it'll revert back to its factory setting. <clears throat> um, okay, and then another, uh, there's two more controls here on the front pa panel. Uh, this is wobble length and wobble frequency. So uh, the laser beam is very small when it's static. So uh, there's a feature inside the welding gun that scans the laser side to side. And that creates a little bit wider of a weld profile. Um, now those settings are already dialed in in these preset modes, but we have some control over it. So we, we have plus or minus 50% control on the width and how and the frequency or how fast it goes back and forth. Um, I'm going to just leave it alone, but sometimes I'll use the width on an outside corner. I'll increase it to get a little bit better radius on the corner. Um, but I'm going to leave this setting exactly how the factory uh, preset is so that you can see how, how well it works just out of the box with, uh, with no changes made to the setting. <clears throat> okay, and then over here we have the wire feeder. Um, so it's a separate unit that feeds the wire. 
Uh, I have a couple of them. There's actually three here just because I have different materials. This one's mild steel, aluminum, and then I have stainless out of sight here. Um, but yeah, so this is just a, uh, basically uh, it has drive rollers and, and it has your reel of wire in here. Uh, you can fit a 10 pound or a 33 pound spool on those. And I use 045 diameter with this process. Um, you can use thinner wire or thicker wire, but the 045 seems to be the sweet spot in my opinion. So that's what I typically use. Um, and the machine just plugs into uh, this port. The welder connects to this port. And when you have the wire feeder turned on, actually maybe this one's plugged in. Nope, they're both not plugged in. Hold on. Which one is that? Okay, so uh, you just turn it on and then you'll set your wire speed here. And it's also um, drawn out in this, this chart. So for that setting, it's recommending a wire speed of uh, like 65 to 70 centimeters per minute. Um, I typically run it just a little bit slower than that. Um, so I think I have uh, the other wire feeder down here that I'm actually using. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to run it a little slower than that at, um, I think, 60 centimeters per minute. Yeah, 60. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so you can just use whatever wire you need for your application. So. Uh, in this case, I have 308L stainless uh, in my wire feeder. Uh, something that's really interesting about this process is that the um, the wire feeding the wire feeder sets your travel speed. So, so the wire is coming through this this uh, cable here, and I'm just going to put my finger on the end. But when I when I pull this trigger, that feeds the wire. You see how if I keep my finger still, the gun actually moves away at the speed of the wire. Um, that that's how it that's how it works when you're welding. So, <clears throat> so you basically just uh, touch the surface, put a little bit of pressure inwards, and then when you fire the laser, it'll feed the wire and start pushing you along. It'll kind of uh, tell you what speed to go by. You can just feel it. So it's really easy and it provides super consistent uh, travel speeds, which is the main thing that you need to get consistent results with this. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then this is the last, uh, wait a second, this is one of the last <laughs> pieces of hardware to talk about. This is the gas regulator. We're just going to regulate the pressure here. We don't need a flow regulator. Uh, the, the pressure regulator is actually what we need. And uh, we change the pressure from between like 15 to 40 PSI, just depending on what you're working with. Um, on mild steel and aluminum, you can set the pressure pretty low. On stainless, I like to turn it up a little bit more to get some cleaner welds. Um, so I have it at about maybe 30 PSI right now. Um, and then, yeah, and then the connection to the machine, it's gonna be this half inch outer diameter plastic line. And it's just a push to connect fitting. So you just cut it to length, push it into the back of the machine. And uh, yeah. And as I mentioned, we're gonna be using nitrogen for this. Nitrogen is the preferred shielding gas for most materials with the laser process. Um, since we don't have a tungsten, then we don't, uh, we don't have the problem uh, so if you tried to use nitrogen with a TIG, it would, it would give you problems because of the tungsten would erode into the weld. But with the laser, uh, we are free to use nitrogen and it, it's better anyway. So yeah, so we have nitrogen here. Um, <clears throat> another good thing about nitrogen is it's far cheaper than argon. Okay, so let me get that out of here. So this is the welding gun. Uh, there's a few things to mention about this. Um, so you'll see that the angle built into the gun, that's that's the preferred angle. We keep this level with the surface. That's the preferred angle to be uh, welding with. <clears throat> there's some uh, wiggle room though. You, you don't have to be spot on. You can be quite a bit uh, out of position and it'll work just fine. Um, there's two triggers. There's one here that flows gas, the shielding gas out of the nozzle. <clears throat> and then the second trigger fires the laser and feeds the filler wire. Uh, if you're fusion welding, it's not going to feed the filler wire. You just uh, end up taking the uh, the wire feeder system off, and then you'll have a uh, just, a, just a nozzle without that wire feeder on there. But this application, we're definitely going to use the wire. 
just because there's little gaps all over you know, here and there. So it's nice and tight when I just have some gaps. Okay. Um, <clears throat> There's two consumable items. So the first being this copper nozzle. Since we do touch the surface when we're welding with this, uh, this will eventually wear down. Although it wears very slowly, uh, I make them last months. Especially with the wire feed, it wears even slower because the wire is actually touching the surface and not the nozzle. <clears throat> uh, and the second consumable item is gonna be a protective glass window called a cover slide. And this is located about here in this assembly. Um, and it serves to prevent any contaminants from accessing the focusing lens, the focusing lens, which is uh, located about here in the gun. And so it's just a sacrificial piece of glass. It's uh, cheaper to replace than the focusing lens and easier to replace. So uh, yeah, this is about 13 bucks located right here. It's really easy to change out. Um, and yeah, I change those maybe once every week or two weeks. Just kind of depends on the cleanliness of the parts that I have. The stainless steel, it really doesn't dirty that lens at all. Um, it's more like galvanized material uh, where you'll see that get dirty kind of more regularly. Hey, can you show them the different nozzles? Yeah. So there's a couple different types of the, the copper nozzles. So I'll just go over the two that, that I like. Um, there's like four different types of nozzles, but uh, this one is the, let me zoom in here a little bit. So this is the wire feeder nozzle. You see it has that little groove on the end and uh, that's how the, the wire stays located. And it sits in that groove and stays centered so the laser can hit it. Uh, but I use this one for most applications, even without the wire. Uh, it's just a nice uh, narrow point, so it gets into tight spaces. And that little groove actually helps when you're um, like riding on an outside corner. It, see how it kind of locks on there. So I use this one a lot. Uh, and then the other one that I use is this fork tip. There's two different widths of this one. Uh, this is the smaller of the two. But this one's also good for outside corners. Um, it'll kind of lock on there nicely and keep you centered. Uh, and it also works well for spot welding. So you can do uh, spot welding like this, where you actually pierce through the first piece of material into the second piece. Uh, and in that case, I use this fork nozzle to create a little bit of clearance for the weld tool to grow. And they're really easy to change. They, uh, they just unthread and then you can, you know, thread on the new one. And then also <clears throat> one more thing to mention on those uh, nozzles is, is the cleaning cleaning function. So when you're using the cleaning function, there's a different set of nozzles. Uh, this one is for outside corners. Again, with that groove, you know, rides on this the edge. This one is for butt welds. Um, it will keep your proper focus distance on a flat surface. And this one's for inside corners. So uh, for cleaning on an inside corner, it will get down in there, right in the corner. Um, the whole purpose behind, between these nozzles, behind these nozzles and, and why you touch the surface during this process is that uh, we're dealing with a focused beam of light here. So we wanna have the proper distance from our surface. So uh, this distance is the proper distance. So uh, if we were trying to manually hover it at the right distance, it would be too inconsistent and we'd be out of focus. So touching the surface, make sure that 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 focus distance is proper. And then it's also a safety feature. So when you're touching the surface, it senses that contact through a wire that's clamped on my table over, over there. And it won't let me fire the laser unless I'm touching the surface. So I can't just fire the laser at whatever I feel like. Um, okay, any questions about uh, any of the safety, the hardware or how this is operated? I have a question. Can yep. You hear me? Yeah. Um, I was under the understanding, you know, I've worked with fiber lasers and um, they give off a gas. I forget what material you're cutting or weld or, you know, cutting lasers um, that it has to be uh, ventilated. 
such as only chromium. <clears throat> yeah, I would I would recommend ventilation with any type of welding. Uh, there's gases released during pig welding and MIG welding that you don't want to be breathing also. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think welding stainless, there can, there's, um, I think, what is it, like chromium or something that you don't want to be breathing in. Um, but that, that's the same with any kind of welding. So I, de I have a ventilation system here and I definitely recommend that no matter what you're doing. Um, but yeah, I mean, galvanize, galvanize is one of the other ones that, that you don't want to be breathing in the, the smoke from the, uh, the zinc and the galvanize. Uh, that's, that's really a real bad one too. So um, yeah, whenever I'm doing galvanize or something that off gases a lot, I, I actually wear a respirator, a ventilated helmet as well. We do galvanize. Something additional. Okay. This is not an enclosed system when you're doing it in a laser. It's different, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Our current needs, we do galvanize, we have a filtration system. <clears throat> um. Yeah, it kind of just depends on your situation, though. You know, like if, if you're in a ventilated enough space, and I think you'll be fine. But I'm in pretty tight quarters here. This this box that I'm in is eight by ten. So uh, so yeah, it's it's important for me to have this this actual. You know, I have this fume extractor that I just kind of position at my weld. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, as far as as far as that goes, it's you know it's no different than any other type of welding. Um, yeah, any other questions before I start welding these? I have one. So with the method of laser welding, um, I know you said that there was like a lens and everything, uh, and also the nozzle. I was wondering if laser would actually add or reduce the amount of contaminants that would be in the weld. Uh, add or reduce the amount of contaminants in the weld? Is that what you said? Sorry, it's kind of quiet. It sounds muffled. Yeah, sorry. We're, uh, we're in a couch room. Yeah, if, if the laser welding reduces the amount of contaminants in the, in the weld. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's much, it provides uh, much less of a chance of um, uh, inclusions and porosity and, and all that. Um, I'll kind of, I'm, I'm going to draw you a picture uh, and kind of, kind of try to explain what laser welding is doing um, in comparison to your TIG or MIG welding process. Um, I, this, I think this really helps out kind of understanding the process a little bit better. The real sim I'm simplifying it a lot here, uh, but just I, I think it, it would make some sense. So <clears throat> I'm just going to draw a cross section of a butt joint. And this one's going to be laser. And this one will be uh, TIG slash MIG. Your traditional arc welding process might vary a little bit, but overall it's the same. Um, okay, so we've got a TIG weld here, the torch. Uh, this is going to be laser welding. Okay, so uh, with the TIG welding and your traditional arc process, you're, you're going to have your uh, shield gas here. You're going to have your arc from the surface uh, transmitting electrons. That's the main difference for welding with electrons here versus uh, photons with the laser. And you're going to start heating the, the material up from this centralized point. And that heat is going to be transmitted into the material like this. So your weld will end up, you know, shaped something like this. Uh, because we're starting the weld from a central point and working our way outwards, any contaminants on the surface can become included into the weld. Um, so it's important to have a nice clean material when you're TIG welding. Also, the contaminants can disrupt the arc and create an unstable arc, which creates uh, less of a, not as good of a weld uh, with uneven penetration and, and stuff like that. Uh, and then another big factor here is that we're actually wasting most of the energy when we're TIG welding or MIG welding. Uh, we'll, we'll make, most of the energy we're inputting is actually uh, overheating the surrounding material, not where the weld is happening. So it, it's wasting a lot of energy. Um, and our heat affected zone is very large. We have uh, a lot of our material that actually has its structure 
spectral integrity affected becomes more brittle when it overheats. Um, and then as when the material is, uh, it causes more warping also because the material shrinks more up here at the top surface where we have a large area of melted material and less at the root where it's just a small amount of melted material. Uh, so I, so it'll, it'll shrink more here and then our material will uh, become warped. This also requires a lot of skill. You have to have the, you know, your standoff distance has to be just right, consistent. Um, you know, your constant grind needs to be good. It can't be dirty. Um, and it's fairly slow, this process. So the laser is totally different. Um, it actually welds more from the inside of the material out. So the surface contaminants aren't as big of an issue. Uh, basic, basically, we're going to have our light focusing at, in a in a hourglass shape like this. This is the focus point. Um, but I'm just going to draw it for simple, to make it simpler as like a dashed line for the laser beam. What it's going to do is it's going to pierce a tunnel through the material or into the material, depending on if we get full penetration or not. It's going to pierce through like a laser cutting machine. Um, and then the light is going to bounce around inside and penetrate from the inside out. Uh, it's it's got um, about 200 times the energy density of your TIG welding process. So we have much less wasted heat with the laser. Our heat affected zone is very local to the actual weld. So maybe we have affected material just right here. Um, and then because we are not relying on that weld pool to grow, we're just gonna get right to the point of weld. Our, our weld is gonna be a little bit more of like an hourglass shape like this. They call it a keyhole weld. Um, so the weld will appear really small on the surface, but in reality, we have better penetration and more even bonding throughout. Um, and then when it comes time for the, the material to cool and shrink, we have uh, a lot more of an even uh, area of shrinkage top and bottom. So the material doesn't warp as much, it stays nice and flat. Uh, but yeah, so the surface contaminants, uh, you don't really need to worry about the material being perfectly clean because we're actually welding from in here. Uh, the very top surface might uh, be affected by the cleanliness, but it's not your overall, your weld is not going to be affected. Um, a lot of times if I see uh, contaminants on the top surface, after the weld, I end up seeing it on top of the weld, like we've gone on the, on, underneath and kind of welded from below. So it's really interesting, um, but this, this is, this, these, reasons are why this process is a lot faster, uh, stronger, <clears throat> and easier. So we don't have to maintain the, we don't have to worry about arc stability. There is no arc. Uh, we don't have to worry about standoff distance because we're touching the surface. Uh, and our travel speed is consistent because of the wire. Any questions about that? Diagram. Good explanation. Good explanation. Thank you. Oh, you're, you're welcome. <clears throat> okay, so uh, yeah, so let me. Any other questions before I get into the, the doing some welding? I think we're yeah, ready to go. Okay, cool. So let me go ahead and put a glove on here and my welding helmet, and we'll just get right to it. And these parts are a little bigger, so I'm going to zoom out just a bit here. If I'm ever out of uh, camera view, let me know. You know, I'll make some adjustments. Um, so I did some testing here on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, finish off this this other side here, and then um, I packed up another one, and I'll do this one uh, in its entirety with any adjustments if we need to make any. Okay, so uh, you'll notice I'm just going to, um, so I'm in view here, and I'll zoom in a little bit actually. So I'm gonna just touch the surface, um, and you'll see that I'll be moving at a consistent pace. Uh, the gaps like this, these are a little bit uh, more difficult to overcome. The, the one thing the laser is not the best at is filling gaps. 
Uh, but that's not to say that it can't do it. It's kind of like TIG welding. It just requires a little bit more skill, uh, you know, to bridge big gaps. Um, so I'll, I'll start by bridging this gap. And then, and then on this part here, I'm just going to do a nice linear weld. And at the end, I'll just kind of make a little circle to uh, fill in that, that hole there. Here we go. Okay, so if you are able to bridge it, it's just a little bit trickier than than the uh, nice fit up. So definitely a good fit up is important with the laser welding. And then this one, similar to the, the first gap, I'm just gonna kind of uh, maneuver the gun in a way where it'll fill, the, fill up that hole. So I'll just zoom in on that one for you so you can get a closer look at all these welds. We notice uh, first off the heat affected zone in comparison to the, the TIG welded example. Very minimal. I can actually uh, touch the part, you know, uh, not too close to the weld. It does heat up, but not nearly as much. As I mentioned, it has about 200 times the energy density. So we have a lot more of a focused heat. We're not wasting our energy uh, in the, the rest of the material. And you'll see here on the underside, we're getting um, good penetration. <clears throat> I'm looking at it real close here, I see that it's almost full penetration. So if we did want full penetration, we could just turn the power up just a little bit more. Okay, and then I'm gonna run um, this part here now. And these inside corners make it really easy to get nice, good gas coverage. So you'll notice the weld is really nice and shiny there. You can see uh, we actually got less heat affected zone than even the, the pack welds made by the TIG weld. Nice, consistent heat here. All the way around. And then uh, moving on to this section here. And so it's really easy. You just make sure you're at the right angle. Basically, all I'm doing here is just making sure my gun's at the right angle. And I'm trying to keep my angle to the material consistent as I go around the radius. So instead of moving like this, I'll try to, you know, walk the gun around it. If I can't get to a certain point, I'll just come at it from the other way and finish it off like that. Uh, sometimes on an inside corner, you might see that <clears throat> if on the inside of a box. Um, and then on this piece, uh, is this all you're doing or are you going around this? So you're just tack tacking them together. Okay. Uh, is there any changes you'd like me to make 
from what you can see here. Uh, when I, I'm going to finish up welding this one with that packed together already. Can we get an inside view of that fully welded one? Yeah. The back side, the other, the other way. Oh, yep. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. If you want me to get more penetration on there? I can turn the power up. I'm at right now. I'm at 600 watts out of 1500, so I'm, uh, you know, not even halfway um, up the power range. No changes. I don't think, I don't think we have any, yeah, any changes for, from that one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, I'll just move on to the the next one then. I was going to. Completely well this one up. This one uh, had a little bit worse fit up, so I might have to do a little bit of gun manipulation in, in this area here. I was trying to get it as tight as I could, but I think it looked like this one was maybe uh, cut, looks like it's cut by hand possibly, so I, I know it's a little bit hard to get it perfect. Um, oh, we got a question here, real quick. So, yeah. Stainless, you were saying you can excavate so it won't have those. Uh, Oh, the coloration, the cleaning, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can pass it. Um, it's going to be real tricky to get inside. I don't think we'll be able to do it inside, but uh, yeah, you want me to show you the cleaning on this part right here? That's a separate operation. It, it is a separate operation, yeah. Yes, real quick, like it's real easy. So you basically just uh, take off the the wire feeder, and then I'll I'll, I'll turn off the wire feeder in a moment here, but. <clears throat> And then I'm going to um, switch over to one of the cleaning nozzles. This is the one that I like to use, so I'm going to use this one. And then turn off the wire feeder. And then I'll show you what I'm doing on the machine here. Uh, once again, I'm just going to um, follow this chart. So there's cleaning modes here. Uh, it says P1 and P2. There's two different intensities. I'm going to go to the lower intensity. I'm just going to go to P1 as my setting. Uh, that gives me 15 millimeters in width of cleaning. I don't need all that, so I'm going to just I'll go down to maybe 10 millimeters wide. Um, you can adjust the width uh, and power on the cleaning as well, but so I'm just going to all I did was narrow it down a little bit. Let me zoom in on this a little bit so you can get a good view. <laughs> and this has this has been proven to be able to do passivation. Um, there is a special technique. You're supposed to do it from two different directions. Uh, so if there's any little ridges on the weld, you actually get the back side of it too. Um, but yeah, it basically uh, gets you a nice clean thermal. It's also good for aluminum. You can take the oxide off the aluminum before you weld it. And it can be a little tricky at the corners, but you can kind of do what I'm doing there by rotating it to get the corner all the way. Hopefully I'm not out of view. I can't see the camera right now. Yeah, we're good. And how they'll need to be replaced. Hmm? That now they'll need to be replaced often? Or? No, no. Even much less than welding because you typically aren't using this. It's often, and you don't have to really put any pressure down. They just kind of, as long as you're touching, you know, they'll be able to fire the laser. Um, so it looks like I could have used a little bit more intensity here on the, the power. Um, but again, you yeah, can no. make adjustments to all of that. And even down here on the bottom on the back side of the weld.
Hey, show them the higher intensity. Okay. Yeah, so I'll turn the intensity up one. And this is also going to be the maximum width here that we'll see. Maybe adjust the camera a little. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there we go. This is nice compared to like the acid brush technique if you're going to be doing passivation because you don't have any chemicals to clean up. All you got to do is just, you know, go over it with the laser. And as long as you're okay with the uh, being able to see. You know the laser's path, then this works really good. Another cool thing you can do with the cleaning is um, like if you wanted to put part numbers on something, so I can turn the width of that wobble all the way down to nothing. Uh, so I have it at zero right now. And let's just say I wanted to make this part number uh, one. So that wasn't the, <laughs> the best handwriting there with the laser, but um, you know you could you could mark if you need to. Uh, you can like put your name on your tools or you know make put a part number on something. Uh, and you could also scribe a line. This is kind of a cool use. Uh, a customer actually showed me this, and I said, you know what, that's a great idea. So let's say you want to describe a line. You have the laser to guide you you know, right, right on uh, where you need to be. So you can kind of put the laser there at the front, put the laser at the end, kick this, your guide, however you need. And then, you know, that's a precise line that's in the material pretty good. Does the surface get hot when you clean? Uh, a little bit, but you know, I'm touching it. Not as much as well. Then. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to move on to uh, welding, finishing off that other piece that I already tacked together. So let me just put my settings back there to how they were. This gap is larger, so it's a little bit trickier. I'm gonna go in like tax instead, so it doesn't get a bit easier. There you go. There's a gap there too, so over that a little bit more. Okay.
Another way to do it is you can kind of add some material on one side, add some material on the other side. And then it makes it a little smaller of a gap. The reason the gaps are difficult is because since we need to maintain contact with the surface in order to fire the laser, you know, when you go over the gap, you're technically like leaving the, the, the surface in the middle. So you kind of have to make sure the wire stays in the weld pool. So that, that's kind of something that you do have to learn to overcome. Tip that makes it easier to handle gaps or anything? Um, not really, because the it depends on the gap size, right? So if the gap is the size of the wire or smaller, then you can just go right over it. But if it's any bigger than that, that wire just wants to go right through the gap. So the tip design doesn't really change that. So yeah, you have to you have to manipulate it, or uh, you know when you cut this pipe, maybe introduce a little instead of having it just a ninety, you could have it kind of drop down where this uh, bend ends, and then uh, kind of make it a little smaller. That'd be probably the easiest, easiest way to go about it. Like all along here, there's actually a gap just about the whole way along here. Sorry, the laser shut off because I'm not, my surface must be a little dirty. I'm not making that contact, so I kind of I thought I left the surface. Uh, it'd probably be best to just put the, the clamp on the actual part. In that sense, so I'll just put this clamp like right on the part. That'll probably make it easier. Interesting. All the way around there. Okay. So I only did like two small tacks on either side. I didn't put a tack in the middle. Uh, so I'll just show you on the other side, but you'll notice here, I just did a little tack right here at, at each end. So what it's going to do is leave me an uninterrupted um, weld, like a nice, nice uh, clean surface to weld. When you tack weld in the middle a bunch, since we are touching the surface, it kind of ends up being like a little bump in the road. So, you know, I'm just, I can like one hand this and you know, hold the part if I need to, or I could also use my second hand as a to help stability, which is what I do a lot of times.
So that one's all done. And then I just got to do the stop piece here. You were saying there's no splatter, but what is that? Just photons? Oh, you yeah. mean the, the little sparks? Yeah. Uh, that's just like contaminants off the surface burning off, uh, from, what, from what I understand. Possibly like small uh, particles of metal, but it's not, um, you know, it's nothing that sticks to the surface. Like you won't find any splatter on the surface. Or, uh, you know, there's no balled up material that'll like jump and hit your skin or anything like that. So your other hand does not, doesn't get. No, yeah, I'm manipulating this part by hand a lot of times. Like even where I just, you know, where I just welded, it's warm and I wouldn't want to stay there forever, but I'm not like, uh, you know, smoking my glove or melting my skin or anything. And if I touched it with my bare skin, you know, I, I would burn myself, but a little bit away, it's fine. But your, the hand that you're holding the the trigger with doesn't get hit with those that splatter. Oh no, no, I I, I don't feel anything at all. And it's probably recommended to wear a glove here too, but I've just been so. A lot of times I actually don't wear gloves, but this part has so, enough welding on it to where it actually does warm up a little bit. <laughs> Most parts, like this part, uh, won't weld won't warm up enough to where I even need to wear gloves uh, unless I touch the actual weld area. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm accustomed to not wearing gloves, but I, I wouldn't recommend that. That, that clamp is just to ensure that the the welder is in contact with the, <clears throat> the yeah so you see the lights not flashing and if i touch the surface oh well the wire must be uh touching the surface somewhere somehow it's making a ground but <laughs> anyways typically the uh the, the clamp on the surface you know it it'll flash the light like this and then only allow me to fire the laser uh, in that circumstance. So right now I'm not touching the surface where that clamp is and I can't fire the laser. It's like a safety feature. Yeah, but it's also it's also to ensure that you have a good weld because if you're not touching the surface, you're not going to be in a good enough focus distance. And that uh that hourglass shaped you know the, the focus distance here's the is the lens here so the light comes in here and then it's going to go and focus at a certain point and then continue on its path and be unfocused so unless we're at this point we're actually out of focus oh wow i drew that completely out of frame didn't i um okay so so you have your focusing lens here and your light is coming in here and then it's going to end up uh, focusing and then continuing on its path so we have our focus point which is where we want to be from our surface so that that tip ensures that we're at the right distance uh, from our focusing lens if we were you know off and our our surface was actually here uh, the spot would be wider which means we have less energy uh, density so we, we might not be able to even melt the metal at a, a certain distance away we, ha we have to be within a you know a certain area in order to actually have a, a weld happen so then when your tip wears out, you'll know it because it'll stop welding. Yeah, um, that's the theory. But in reality, I've never had one wear out enough to do that. <laughs> um, it would it, apparently, from what I'm told by uh, some people at the company, the manufacturer, um, stainless and mild steel can be up to about four millimeters out of focus before your welds are, you know, not going to work good. Um, so imagine wearing this down uh you know almost three sixteenths of an inch that's a lot of wear and i've never had one wear that much um unless i damaged it like i dropped it and dented it to the point where i had to like grind it off um 
aluminum, it's a little bit more picky. The focus distance on aluminum is more critical. So, uh, you know, the wear could become a factor on aluminum, but with stainless and mild steel, you're not going to have that problem uh, uh, with just a little bit of use. It'll, it'll take a lot of use for that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I showed you this part. I'm going to move on to uh, this part. And this is a little thinner, it looks like. Uh, the only thing I did when I did this part was I did the same setting, but I turned the power down to 550 watts. So the only difference here. Uh, I just went down to 550. That's it. So a 50 watt decrease in power. Could probably get away with a little less maybe, but that seemed to work fine. So I'm just going to go with that. And yeah, one second. Here we go. A little thing. That's fine. Look at my ground clamp. I'm wondering if I have a split in that wire somewhere. I'm going to have to check that later. It's getting uh, not having the best con time contacting right now. As you can see, after you know welding those four corners, it's it's not even I can get within an inch of everything practically with my fingers. Um, but let me show you that up close. See, I got full penetration. I, I could turn the power down more if I needed. So I'll do that on the next one. I'll turn the power down a bit. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show you the increased wobble. So I have a couple more. Uh, I know your paper said that one of these was pre-welded, but none of, none of them were. They were all um, unwelded. That wasn't they're exactly what they're trying to um, <clears throat> replicate. But yeah, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my wobble up 30% and leave the power alone and see if I get a little bit better radius on the corner. I can use a little bit less power. So I'm going to go down another 50 watt. question would it be better to weld it from the inside or from the outside on that uh really it depends on what you're doing with this so if you know which side is going to be visible if it matters if the you know the weld um, is smooth on smoother on the inside or the outside i'm not sure exactly what this is i know it's some type of baffle but i, I don't know what the orientation of how it mounts is you know it's not an aesthetic part it's just just wondering it, if it would be easier. It would show them a couple inside ones. Yeah, I'll do some on the inside. It's just kind of up to you, I guess. Uh, you know, the results look good on the outside. I would say it's fine. But it is always a little trickier to balance on an outside edge than it is on the inside. So let's do some, let's do some on the inside. Can you take some from the back? You got to go in the back? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go to A little harder to show you on the camera on the inside. 
but as far as the results there, um, no problem getting it from the inside. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna zoom out. Can't figure out where the camera is there. There, that's a good angle. So there's from the inside, and you can see the outside then has the uh, the gray, the gray color on it, as opposed to the um, well, that's on the outside. I like I like from the outside better, I think personally. It's just structural. It's not. It'll be plenty strong either way. And then another thing you could do, I'm just going to show you this is kind of a real interesting feature. Um, I know you, this is not aesthetic, but uh, this is a cool feature that you can do here. I'm going to share my screen with you. Is uh, you can make your own settings. So can you see this computer screen now? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to make a setting here. Um, Okay, so this is a modulation setting. This is a user interface that you can use just by plugging a computer into the, the welder. Uh, so I'm making a setting here and I can save it. So I'll just click save. 650 watts, two millimeters wide. I'm pulsing it three times a second at 75% duty cycle. And there's a lot of other settings you can make here, but this is just one I wanna show you. It ends up looking really nice. I've saved it. So now it's on the, the welder saved onto the welder, I can use it again later without using the computer. Um, and then this is gonna give me this uh, pulse effect, which sometimes I use for smaller pieces like this to limit the heat input also. A little bit too much power on that one. Let's turn the power down a little bit. So now I'm adjusting it just from the, the welder. That pulsing uh, reduces our overall heat input. It also allows us to go a little. Oops, I didn't do too good on that one. This is kind of a tricky part to show this to you on, actually, because it's a small weld. But I'll show you on a bigger piece so you can get an idea what it what it is. Yeah, cool. So, okay, so I'm gonna just show you on, on this piece. What I'll do is I'll slow down my wire speed a little bit. And then I have that pulsing action. So I have my wire feed consistent there, but the actual uh, laser is pulsing. Uh, and I can I can make adjustments to that. You know, I'm, I'm actually going to make a little bit more of adjustment. I want more duty cycles. So I'll show you. I'm okay with the uh, power and everything, but I want more time on with the laser each pulse. So I'll go up 10% there, save it. With this kind of equipment? Huh? Like tack welding? Oh, you can do spot oh. welding, and I'll, I'll show you that next. Uh, but this is just pulsing the laser, so you limit your overall heat input. 
Uh, whereas all the welding you've seen me do so far, the laser has been on the whole time that I'm welding. This one, the laser is pulsing three times a second. So I can limit my heat input, um, but also it lets me go a little slower without adding uh, too much heat. But it, but it also adds a nice aesthetic, but it, there's, you know, the purpose of it is that it'll limit your heat input. So this helps you with real thin materials, like pulsing the laser. Um, and then the, for the, for the spot welding feature, um, I'm going to, I'm going to remove the, the wire feed here and then turn off my wire feeder. I'll go ahead and put this, this nozzle on also. <laughs> and then I'm going to use a setting for tack welding. So uh, right here on this chart, the T modes mean tack weld. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of 18 gauge, looks like, and then go to a piece of uh, eighth inch stainless. So I'll just Lay these on top of each other. And the tack mode that I'm going to choose is time. So I'll just fire the laser and keep the, the button pressed until it turns itself off. And then I'll move on to my next tack weld. Um, so to set the setting, I'm going to choose tack weld and then I'll choose how deep I want to penetrate. So I want to go through the first piece, which is maybe 50, 40 or 50,000, uh, and most of the way through the eighth inch. So let's say uh, about 160. Thousand, so I'll go to A5, 1150 watts. I'm just changing my settings again, just how I did before. A5, 1150 watts. And then, yeah, so I'm just going to basically pierce right through into the second piece. And second. There you go, the first one failed. That one worked really nice. So that was through the thin into the thick, and then I'm going to try some uh, through the thick into the thin and see how that works. Mm -hmm. Nope, perfect. So, you know, the depth of penetration is what's set by the set settings, not necessarily your material thickness. So, uh, you know, I did it both ways, thin to thick and thick to thin. There's uh, thick to thin, thick to thin on the back, and then uh, through the thin into the thick. And uh, the nice strong uh, pack welds and then or spot welds. And then there's another feature, which is really cool um i'll just do it on two thin pieces but uh, this is something they do in the automotive world a lot which is um i'm, I'm going to make a setting that's going to have a zigzag uh spot weld this is it's called in the automotive world they call it laser seam stepping um that's how they basically bond the panels of the cars together rather than the traditional spot weld so i'm going to go to user continuous wave i'm going to make my wobble link I'm going to max it out. It doesn't have to be, but I'm going to do it to exaggerate the effect. And I'm going to make the frequency of the wobble really low. So let's do maybe two times per second. Uh, that should be enough power. And yeah, so I'll just save that. And then, um, yeah, let me put the camera back. Basically, in this with this mode, I'm going to have the laser wobbling side to side really slowly and I'm going to move along so it'll make like a, a zigzag scene. Um, I'm going to back it up with another piece of metal in case I go all the way through. I don't want to stick it to my table. So check this out. This is one of my favorite parts about this. I think this is so cool and I figured it out. Could use a little bit more power. Right, let's just turn the power up a little bit. Mm 
you get a lot of surface yeah. area of weld instead of like your tra your traditional spot weld where you just have a little spot actually <laughs> oh there you go that's just about perfect it just barely stuck to that base piece so that's almost full penetration it's perfect so i thought that was really nice all right any other questions You'll be, you'll be sending us back all those uh, parts uh, for us to check out too, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I used one of uh, one of each for testing, but I'll, I'll send you back all the other ones. You will also send you the recording too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've got a room full of impressed people here. So, <laughs> yeah, thank you for awesome. uh, showing us everything. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah good All camera right. work. <laughs> Thanks. I'm a actor, director, and cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll send all this stuff back to you then, and uh, and uh, yeah, we'll box it up and get it shipped out. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. Uh, yeah. If you have Ryan, any more I'll questions, get, I'll get in touch with you. Yeah. Yep. All right. Cool. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good one. I want to hear from.